The Hartshorn House is one of Wakefield's most recognizable historic sites. The history of the house begins just 25 years after the town's first settlement. In one of the first divisions of land, a man named William Hooper had a homestead near here. In 1664, he sold his land, and the story of the Hartshorn House begins. The land was purchased by a young woman. Upon the death of her husband, Mary Morrill had inherited enough money to purchase William Hooper's homestead. Mary was a 24-year-old widow then. She married Thomas Hodgman, himself a widower, who had recently lost his first wife, Catherine Moore of Salem. When the Hodgmans purchased the land, we're really not sure whether their house contained some elements from Hooper's earlier homestead. By 1681, they were living in a house in this location. When we look at the Hartshorn House, it's important to remember that the building was the work of centuries. It originally started with just one room. This is probably the oldest room in Wakefield. And this one room was almost certainly the start of the old house. Here the couple sheltered by the wide hearth and cooked. Here they worked for warmth. Here they slept as well. The wooden corner cabinet was probably added in the 19th century. The furnishings in this room are all antiques, but they're not original to the house. But there would have been an early cradle in this house, and perhaps something resembling this cradle chair. Tom and Mary were not able to have a child of their own, but they adopted young Josiah Weber in 1668. The first addition to this first room in the house was upstairs, accessible by this staircase. This room is not open to the public, so it's not furnished as it was originally. The wide hearth for warmth is flanked by the pine paneling that was probably added a hundred years later. The addition of this sleeping chamber doubled the size of the house and allowed room for guests. In the 1680s, this two-room house would have been considered very fine. This summer kitchen was probably added before 1700. Very important work was done here, so this was a very important room. The hearth is large and expansive and is fitted out with innovations to help regulate the heat for cooking. Iron fittings to be used in the house could have been purchased nearby at the Saugus Ironworks, which is now a National Historic Site. This is called a beehive oven. It was probably added after 1720. It would have been ideal for baking. The room has been fitted out with things that let visitors know what life was like in years past. Because this house was continuously occupied for about 248 years, the kitchen tools and items on view here span centuries. The pierced tin foot warmer was probably from the 1820s. There was a tin factory in town, so tin would have been easy to come by. Here are some 18th and 19th century iron pots and trivets. A coffee grinder, circa 1850. The pine pipe box had a drawer. It was circa 1800. We see a candle mold and a baking peel from the early 1800s, all tools that would have been essentials for the contemporary kitchen. The gun by the fireplace was an important tool in hunting for food, but it also reminds us that life was dangerous here in the 1600s. There was danger from wild animals, but there was also fear of attack by Native Americans. Tom Hodgman was a sergeant in King Philip's War in the 1670s. The Hodgmans chipped in to help the town buy the town's land in the Indian deed. Their share was one shilling. Tom and Mary Hodgman both lived long lives. Tom lived to be 93, and Mary lived to be 95. The family sold the house in 1725 to the widow Patterson, who owned the house for 32 years. 
When the Pattersons sold it, it included a barn and a shop. The new owner, Jonathan Cowdery, made the next big addition to the house. This is the room added by Jonathan Cowdery. He was a skilled artisan, a clock and buckle maker who was related to the Cowdery family who owned most of the current Prospect Street. He probably made good use of the workshop outside, but he also added this large and lovely room and a little area to the kitchen. This room looks more modern with its paneling and its size. Perhaps Jonathan Cowdery used it as a showroom for some of his wares. He owned this house through the time of the American Revolution. One of the artifacts in the room is from the Revolutionary Period, a loan note dated to December 1st, 1777. Jonathan Cowdery owned the property until the 1790s. For many years, he was probably a landlord renting it out. In 1792, he sold the house and property to Dr. John Hart. Dr. Hart was a very important man in this town. Not only was he the town's doctor, but he had also served in the Revolutionary War from Bunker Hill until 1783. He knew and worked for George Washington. He was mentioned in proceedings of the Continental Congress in Philadelphia. Dr. Hart bought the house's income property. It was he who added the room over this one, as well as the two end rooms, probably before 1800. Dr. Hart was a mason, and the rooms upstairs were used as Masonic Hall. The house was also used as an inn, called the Lafayette House. We'll go upstairs to see the rooms that made up the Masonic Hall. They've been divided into two rooms now. These rooms are used by the house residents, so they're furnished for modern living. This is a behind the scenes look at the second floor. This room and the room over the kitchen and the far chamber were all added by Dr. Hart. He sold the house in 1802 and there were several men who owned it for a few months before it was purchased in 1803 by a young man named James Hartshorn. James was a cord wainer, or shoemaker. His family had been early settlers in this town, and they lived nearby. He brought his bride, Abigail Coggin, from Woburn to live here. The house was already very old by the time the young couple moved in. James Hartshorn would live in this house until his death in 1870. The East Room, which was added by Dr. Hart before 1800, would have been the most up-to-date room in the house then. Although improvements would certainly have been made to the kitchen and other rooms, the Hartshorn family actually had no effect upon the size and shape of the house itself. In the East Parlor, three items actually belonged to the Hartshorn family. The stool, the mahogany Sheraton table were donated by family members. The oil painting was done by Colonel Hartshorn's great-grandson, Richard Gardner Hartshorn. Abigail Hartshorn bore seven children before her death in 1816. In 1819, James married again. His second wife, Mary Poole Hartshorn, bore him six more children. Of the 13 children born here, only eight would live to adulthood. Colonel Hartshorn was a shoemaker and quite prosperous. He earned the title Colonel by his service in the town's cavalry company, possibly around the time of the War of 1812, but he saw no combat. His property contained outbuildings to serve his business, as we can see on this map. He and his wife Mary were still living here through the Civil War. We believe the family to have strongly supported the war effort. Colonel Hartshorn's son-in-law, Samuel Gardner, owned a first edition copy of Uncle Tom's Cabin. The Hartshorn's youngest son, Charles, would serve in the Union Army. After James' death in 1870, his widow Mary lived in the house with her daughter and son-in-law, John and Mary Rayner. Mary left the house to the Rayners in 1884. 
Sadly, the house was in fairly bad condition when it was next sold in 1890. Its new owners were J. Reed Whipple of Boston and John G. Morrill of Wakefield, who with Frank H. Atwood later formed the Morrill Atwood Ice Company. The ice industry was tremendously successful in Wakefield at the time, using the railroad to allow quick and easy bulk transit. Some of the ice was shipped to J. Reed Whipple's hotels. Some of the ice traveled all the way around the world, or at least all the way to South America. At one time, Lake Quanapowit was ringed with ice houses. The Hartshorn House was actually incidental to the purchase of Hartshorn Meadow, now Vets Field, where the ice houses were actually located. The Hartshorn House itself was turned into a tenement for ice house workers. The house was fairly well suited to being split into distinct pieces, since it boasts three separate staircases. On September 26, 1929, when the ice houses were nearly empty and the ice industry was faltering due to the rapid rise of electrical refrigeration, a spectacular general alarm fire consumed all of the ice company's buildings, except for the Hartshorn House. On October 30th, 1929, on the day following the stock market crash, the town of Wakefield took over the deed of the house and Hartshorn's Meadow for the sum of $14,999. The building was in a fairly dilapidated condition. In March 1930, by a narrow margin, the sum of $2,000 was voted to restore the building as part of the town's participation in the tercentennial celebration of the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1930. The work was performed under the supervision of the Park Board and a subcommittee of the Tercentennial Committee. After the statewide celebration was over, a separate committee formed to take care of the house. In 1930, the Colonel James Hartshorn House Association was officially formed. Since then, the association has cared for the house. Although the house is owned by the town of Wakefield, the association preserves and protects it. Although the Hartshorn House has changed in color since the 1930s, every care is taken to preserve the historical integrity. Special fundraising events are planned and carried out some of which have become among the most beloved of the town's traditions. Since the 1930s, for example, there has been a holiday traditional open house, which has evolved into the Christmas tea. This is a beautiful event that we hold annually every year. We have two garden clubs that each decorate a room in the first floor of the house. We have another group, the Arts and Crafts, society that decorates the third room that we have decorated for the year for the season this event always takes place on the first sunday in in december we have people that work upstairs setting up all the trays of cookies we have people set, uh, doing serving the tea downstairs we have greeters at the door we have people running up and down the stairs, filling the trays with the cookies and bringing down more tea. It's just, it's fun. It's, it's a fun, fun event. And it, it, the, usually the house is filled with people the entire three or four hours that the house is open. When I first came to Wakefield, um, I should say when I first got married, I got my first invitation to the Hotshorn House Christmas tea, and I was out of my mind. I thought, I think my, hus my husband had run for selectman that year, and I was just ecstatic to think that I had been finally invited to an event at the Hotshorn House. Little did I know that I would be getting involved to the extent that I have become. I have been a director at the Hotshorn House for 30 years now, which is very hard for even me to believe. My main uh, thrust right now is on the House Committee, 
and we are charged with maintaining the house. Uh, lots of things need to be done, as you can imagine, in a house that's almost 300 years old. Even though the town owns the property, uh, they do not contribute anything, any money to maintain the property. That is the charge of the directors, the Hotshone House uh, directors. We have many fundraising um, activities throughout the year. The uh, yard sale that is held um, every other year or every two years. Uh, we have a wonderful calendar uh, sale in the um, Christmas time. And then we uh, raise money at our annual breakfast uh, in June, which is held at the uh, West Side Social Club. The Hartshorn House Breakfast has been a Wakefield tradition going back to when the, when the association was first started back in the um, uh, late 20s, 1930s. And um, it used to be a garden party initially, and um, I think it may have been invitation only, but it was, uh, it was a, a smaller affair. Then it ended up moving down to the tennis courts behind the Hartshorn House, and it was held there for years and years. Um, and then eventually, um, as we, we looked at the, the sort of logistics of that, that setup um, and some other reasons, we decided to move it over to uh, First Parish Church. And it was in First Parish Church for a while. And currently, we hold it at the uh, West Side Social Club, which is handicap accessible, um, very easy parking. And we've been holding it there for probably close to five years now. Um, it's, it's, again, a great Wakefield tradition. The breakfast is always held on the first Tuesday in June. It's quite a lovely event, decorated within a fairly well of the um, spring season. Everybody on the board is expected to work preparing for the breakfast and at the breakfast. In years past, we cooked all the food, we cracked all the eggs, 90 dozen eggs the night before, and we cooked all the hams, we took care of everything, but in the meantime, we've gotten very lazy and we've hired a caterer, which makes our job so, so much easier. We still think that the Hot John House Breakfast is quite a social event, and we encourage people to come every year. We sell tickets, they're very, very reasonable, and we have raffles, and it's a, um, it's a wonderful time for everyone to get together, but at the same time, we are raising the money for, to support the house. All of the money that we get from all of our fundraising efforts are to maintain the house and keep the house running. Um, anybody in a house, anybody that owns property, or even renters know how expensive it is to maintain a house, so you can imagine how expensive it is to maintain a house of this age. One of the uh, main sources of income for the, the association for the upkeep of the house is the, uh, the rentals. People in town have a great opportunity to uh, use the Hartshorn House as a rental facility for things like showers, birthday parties, um, receptions. Uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, have a chance to um, have an event held in a historic setting. It's a beautiful spot right there by the lake, uh, beautiful gardens around it, um, right there sort of in the, the center of town, um, very accessible, and uh, it's, a, it's a great place for birthday parties, for wedding receptions, um, uh, bridal showers, baby showers. We've had all sorts of parties there. Um, and it's, uh, you can use the outside. There are four historic rooms inside, uh, period rooms that are really fantastic um, to uh, sort of have small kind of intimate settings uh, to sit and talk with your friends. And we rely a lot on the, uh, on the, the rentals um, to help maintain the, the uh, properties. It's, um, it's expensive to maintain the property. The, the facilities can be used for a moderate cost, and um, you can look on the Hartshorn House website to get more information about that. Well, my name is Rich Petropoulos, and I had the opportunity to be the Hartshorn House resident from 2008 to 2010 uh, with my wife. Jen, and uh, we lived in the upstairs of the house, and uh, not only do we have the opportunity to maintain the downstairs and the grounds, um, you know, cutting the grass, etc., and maintaining um, the flowers and plants, in addition to some of the local um, gardening associations that would help out. We also were responsible for uh, organizing functions in which people uh, would 
rent out the bottom of the house and uh, we would prepare uh, for them to use the house. We would stay upstairs during the course of their function. Sometimes there have been weddings, there have been baby showers, uh, people have rented it for family reunions, etc. Um, and so we always really enjoyed that, uh, giving them the opportunity to enjoy the grounds as it's located in such a, a beautiful spot. Yeah, we, we really took our responsibilities seriously as, as the caretakers, knowing how much history was in that house, just the amazing thought that the house had been standing almost 100 years before the country was founded, um, and just knowing that there's, there have been people living in it that entire time and kind of having that history around you all the time is, is really special. So Dan kind of took over making sure that the grounds and that the house itself were maintained well. And I focused on the event rentals for the downstairs portion of the house. The Hotchon House is a very, very important part of Wakefield because as Nancy Bertrand, our historian, would tell you, and we always tell the kids who come to visit that, we can't know about our future, we can't plan on our future till we know about our past. And the years that the Hartron House has been standing in the place where it is, history has changed so much in those hundreds of years. The Educational Outreach Committee was formed to teach the children of Wakefield the history of our beautiful home by the lake. We have many different stages in that educational process. The first being the third graders get a coloring book that they are free to color in and enjoy. The fourth graders use pages from that coloring book for an essay contest. The essay contest is open to every fourth grader and we choose one winner from every school. The essays are just fantastic and they're wonderful, wonderful to read. They are given a prize, we have a party at the end and we have a wonderful evening with their parents. The fifth graders come to the Hotchon House for a tour. It is, it is coordinated with their curriculum and it is just so meaningful for them to walk through the house and to see the stages of their history taking place. The board of directors does a phenomenal job. They're a very passionate group of people. They really care about the home, the town, the people in the town, and they care about presenting Wakefield's best face to the public. So they, they care about preservation, and we care about preservation, and um, they care about making sure that the, the home is safe for anybody who's coming in, and that it's accurate, and that it's well cared for, and it looks like there have been people there the whole time, which it really it has, and it's just an amazing fact. Um, my wife and I met so many people. There were um, association members and, and, and those people who would come monthly uh, during the months of, I think, September to May to uh, meet and discuss the house uh, and the improvements that it needed, different fundraising aspects. And uh, we met so many kind people who were really devoted to uh, keeping the house alive and a vibrant part of the community. Uh, and I would certainly encourage anyone to um, join the Hartshorn House as a member. Um, it's so important to uh, maintain this beautiful property that we have here in town. I ask myself, I'm involved in a lot of charitable things, and I often ask myself, what's the difference between asking to have money spent on a piece of history as opposed to the food pantry or whatever. Each has its very, very important place, and the Hotchon House, to me, is worth the work, the time, the effort. We only wish that we could encourage more people, younger people, to get involved so that we could sustain the membership of this organization so that we could keep the house going for as long as we're able. It is such a, a, a vital living part of this community that it uh, it really is very very important to keep its legacy alive and by by doing so keeping the actual building together um, it's gone through so many uh, annotations over the years um, and and the area around it has changed so much um, but I think that's uh, part of the reason why it needs to be preserved even as the area changes and um, 
house styles change, experiences change, you know, the idea that cars are driving by and people are running by or jogging by the softball field next door. Um, it, it is such a sense of community in that one little spot, but uh, it sort of serves um, as a reminder to all of the people walking by that, you know, this is uh, an experience that we can all collectively share in our history, uh, that this is what Wakefield used to be like, and um, it should be preserved uh, as part of our uh, collective experience for the present and the future as well.